The new cursor agents appear very impressive and can do a lot of different things, but honestly, I was a little bit disappointed with the release. However, there is one hidden feature that I think is honestly the best part of the cursor agents. So I wanted to share that with you, as well as tips that I've gathered from using the cursor agents over the last week. Agents are a new feature that Cursor released in version 43 almost immediately after Windsurf came out with this as their sort of core feature. The agents are supposed to fill in the gap that Cursor had when it comes to autonomy and having the AI do more of the work on its own. So they're supposed to be able to find relevant files depending on your request, make changes to multiple files all at the same time, and then even be able to run various commands in their own terminal and keep iterating on the code without your direct involvement. So on the surface, it really seems like it would be an incredible feature and a huge productivity boost. But what I found was that it's a little bit more nuanced than that. The trouble starts with actually getting these agents because Cursor did not have an automatic update for everybody that already has it installed. So if you want to play around with the agents, you're actually going to have to go to the Cursor website, download Cursor from scratch, and then install it, and then you'll have version 43 and you can actually use them. From there, it still takes a few extra steps to start using the agents because you have to open up the side chat bar and you have to select Compose and then you have to click on the little agent button. One of the frustrating things that I found is that it keeps flipping back to the regular version of Compose, which doesn't have all these new features. Now there is a setting that you can activate to make it sticky so that every new Compose instance is supposed to start with the option that you selected, but I found that it wasn't very reliable and it just kept flipping to the normal mode anyway. So just make sure that you actually have that agent uh, button highlighted to use these new features. Keep in mind that you can only use the new agent features inside of the Cursor Composer and not inside of the chat, which means that you're stuck with some of the quirks that the Cursor Composer has. So you might be wondering what's the difference between chat and Composer? And honestly, it's somewhat subtle and not super clear because the biggest difference that I've seen is that in chat, you generate these files and it can work on multiple files, but you have to apply each one of them one by one and you kind of see those changes being made. In Compose, it's going to be able to apply the changes immediately to the file so that you can see the diffs as you're going through the files. And it's gonna be just a little bit easier to navigate across those different files. Now, other than that, the big difference that Compose has is that for some reason, it really loves to delete a bunch of your code. <laughs> and I'm not sure why that is, but that has been the main reason that I haven't used it and I've relied on the chat sidebar instead. Sure, like 80 to 90% of the time it works fine, but that 10, 20% of the time, it'll just wipe out the whole file and replace it with a few lines of code that it generated, or it'll just put in a comment that's like, keep all the existing code here. I don't know why there's such a difference between the chat and compose in that way, but again, that's why I've just kept leaning on the chat because it's been more reliable. Unfortunately, agents are not uh, included with the chat option, so you have to use Compose to be able to use these new agents. And because the agents are only available in Compose, you're basically stuck with that file and code overwriting and deletion issue. But moving on to the agent feature itself, let me share my experience over the last week. It has definitely been a bit of a learning curve because I kept trying various different things, tasks of different scope, and I kept running into issues and having a hard time grasping just how much scope could the agent handle on its own. Because if I gave it a task that was too big, it would just find irrelevant files or not find the files that I needed, and maybe it would make changes but not change all of the files that I needed it to change. So ultimately, it took me a while to kind of hone in on the right amount of work that I needed to give to the agent, and I found it to be roughly similar to what I could ask the chat anyway, so it wasn't that much of a difference. And I actually found the file identification to be pretty spotty, so I ended up having to tag the files in there anyway, just like I would have had to do with the chat. And I mean, once in a while, it would find an extra file that it needed, but most of the time, it just would ignore any additional files that may be related, which I found kind of strange because all these files, you know, they're importing each other, there's some direct interfaces that are going on. So it doesn't seem like it would be such a challenge to follow those paths and pull out the relevant files when needed. However, the agents don't really seem to do that super well. 
so my first tip there is continue to tag the files and maybe it'll find some additional relevant files if it needs to, but don't depend on that because you'll end up going back and restarting the process. Speaking of which, these agent flows take a while to run. So you're gonna be sitting there and waiting for it uh, definitely longer than you would with the chat. The other limitation that I've seen with these agents is that although they take a while to run and they can change multiple files, they don't keep going even if they should. One example that really showcases this is when I had a task that required changing six different files to centralize some logic that was more or less copy pasted across them. The agent only found four of the files that it needed to change and then it proceeded to only change two of them. So this kind of spotty uh, getting the work partially done can be a real risk if you're not paying enough attention, especially if you're just depending on the AI to handle most of the things for you, because it can be really hard to notice that, you know, there's two files that it didn't find and two more that it needs to change. Even if you tell it to keep going, it's not gonna find those two original ones. So it was definitely a bit of an issue and required me to be really tuned in and double checking everything that the agent was doing, which is doubly important because Compose likes to just delete a bunch of your code. Another feature of the agents is that they can execute terminal commands, but in my experience, it didn't execute them in the correct directories and I had no way to kind of nudge it in the right direction, so I would reject it and then it would get confused. So in my case, the feature didn't really live up to its full potential. So in many ways, I found the agents to be lacking some of the core capabilities that I was expecting from them. However, there are a couple of features that are pretty cool. The most useful feature in this entire release is something that's actually hidden on the cursor settings page, and that is the ability to iterate on lints. When this is activated, that means that the cursor agent will write all of the code, but then it will actually check to see if all of your imports and your types are properly implemented, which as a user you would see very visually with just like red underlines, but it's going to be able to automatically detect those errors and then continue to iterate on the code. And it will actually do a pretty good job of fixing those types of issues. So that is really the biggest productivity boost that I've seen with version 43 is its ability to write the code and then immediately update it to fix all of those imports and types. Now, there is a problem with this feature, which is that it only does it once. So if it fixes the code, but there's some additional lint issues that are going on, uh, well, you're gonna have to tell it to keep going. So I hope that in a future version, they just make it kind of recursive so that it just keeps iterating on that until it runs out of issues to fix. The other thing that I do like is a core feature of the composer, which is the fact that it immediately applies the changes to the files. And this is something that you see in Windsurf as well. So I think it makes applying the code changes a little bit smoother. There is also another feature which I haven't personally found a lot of use for, but I think is pretty cool. And that is the ability for the agents to use tools and actually execute some of the code that you have written in a file. I've seen some examples of this on X, but I haven't really figured out where I would actually use such a feature, but conceptually it does seem pretty cool. All in all, I feel like this release was rushed in order to match the capabilities that Windsurf came out with a couple of weeks ago, but I am excited to see the cursor team moving in this general direction. So I think if they fix some of the issues with Composer overwriting a bunch of your code and they make the file retrieval and identification more accurate and iterate on some of the lints, they could have a really powerful product here. However, as it stands today, I don't think this feature really moves the needle all that much for cursor because you still have to tag the relevant files if you want it to be reliable and any speed boost that you gain from having it do a little bit more work is offset by the fact that it takes longer to do that work and the fact that you have to go and then make sure that all the files are accurate and that it didn't delete things. When it comes to the Volo score, I would say this release boosts cursor by two points in the autonomy category because it does try to identify the relevant files and sometimes it succeeds. And the lint feature as well as the script execution is a nice new feature that cursor has added. However, I think this bonus is offset by the fact that cursor has not been as reliable with this new feature because as I've mentioned, there's a lot more unpredictability when it comes to what this tool can actually do and can it pull the relevant files? Will it actually run through all of the code changes that it needs to? It becomes a less reliable tool. You have to really have your eye on the code and be course correcting it more frequently. 
Also, since they now have the chat and the compose next to each other and they have the normal compose and the agent compose, and it can be really difficult for somebody working with this thing to understand which option to use, which settings they should have enabled, and how to phrase things to make sure that it actually generates a reliable result. So in the end, I think it's a net zero kind of change where they've added these autonomous capabilities, but the reliability and ease of use suffers. So all in all, it's still a 63 on the Volo score. I'd love to hear about your experience with the cursor agent, so let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. All that being said, cursor is still an extremely powerful tool. Check out how I used it to build a full stack app in just five hours. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care.